Hey friends, what's up? Kaz here. Welcome back to another server inventory or bucket spigot plugin tutorial. If you're joining for the first time, feel free to hit that subscribe button because I do these every week. If you have a suggestion on one you'd like me to do, feel free to comment that in below. That would be the comment section for you new people. And if you find this video helpful, please leave a like below because that helps me out for helping you guys out. And this was suggested by Alexander Novak, Epan Eternal, Ryan McAllister, Ray and Raman. Uh, NP8, X Fears, number one, XX, M7, MD, you need a shorter username. Deem It's Darko, Logistic Gaming, all suggested my command. And it is made by Ivan Pro. It's already been updated to 1.9, which is really cool. So be sure to update your servers. If you're wondering what version you're on, just do version and it will show you. Like this one's running on 1.9. It's already 22 versions behind. They're constantly updating this so be sure to update it. i do have a tutorial on how to update your server link will be in the jibbles what this is is a custom command plugin that is super powerful so i've done a more basic one in the past called simple alias it allows you to put any command you want with that slash so if you want to if you're on a hub server and you want to get rid of that server server name you just put that in and then you just do the slash server name you could do that in this as well. It has Bungie support. It does icon menus as well. So like chess GUI basically. Um, it can do scripts. It's super powerful. Can run from any sign. Um, if And then it can run from any block if you set it up in the config. As well as switches, uh, pressure plates, doors, all that stuff. It's super powerful. With that in mind, it is rather complicated because there's a lot that it can do um but it basically will just take a little bit of time i'm gonna hopefully get you guys started i'm not gonna hit every aspect of this plugin tutorial otherwise this video would be an hour long we're just gonna go through some of the basics help you guys get started i'm just gonna make note of some uh, items and features that you're probably going to use and then you can modify that to be what you want it to be so just to show you guys what it does uh, we've set up a custom alias called YouTube and that just rep replies the player name and then um, tells you what to do with a overlay of my channel URL that kind of stuff as well as we could do warp and that actually costs five dollars but I because I'm op I bypass it we also set that over here. We've assigned it to assign by using that bracket, my command, and then the the slash. Now, there is a way that you could do this without that my command. If you just put a sign and then you add the signs to your allowed block list that you can put, then you can have that. But basically, uh, right-click, same thing, have the overlay, all that stuff. Um, you can bind it to switches and all that stuff, um, which will talk about here so basically you want to look at it go my command block set create so now that is whatever block you're looking at you've created now block is deceiving unless you've added it to the allow blocks in the configuration file which we will go over here in a moment it won't let you do that so if i try to do that over here it's going to say block not recognized so we've created that block now we want to add a command to it so we're going to go add warp so we've overridden the built-in warp command because i am running essentials but with this it's overridden that command and then so we've added it there you can also then you can also check to see what's on that block by doing check and now whatever block you're looking at it's going to check that and it shows you what is there you can also do the switch command if you want this to actually run as the console now you can see when we check it says launched by console we want it to be launched by the player and then when they right click on it it teleports them it runs that special warp command which actually warps them to spawn some other examples here is you can do icon menu there's a whole lot of built-in examples which will help you get started and help you understand how the plugin works and then you can it opens help menu um, a custom help menu all that stuff you can do next page uh, and there's a hello there that returns a do something. It, it, the other thing is you can do my command help, which is what we just called. So you can do custom help command. So if they do slash help, it can return their, your own version of the help menu, all that stuff. You could do SB test. It also has a scoreboard uh, tie-in, which is really cool. 
Um, you could do bungee test. Now this isn't going to work because we don't have bungee cord, but basically when you do bungee test, it's going to uh, teleport you to hub. We'll show you guys that in the configuration. And then there's also per world commands, which is really cool. So they, they can run the same command and depending on what world they're in, they, they will be it'll return something different so for instance if they want to use slash spawn and then you want to make it actually teleport them to a certain spot depending on the world they're in you can do that in there now there's a whole lot of variables that you can include as you saw the player what being one of them you do my command uh, text args to see um, some of these returns so you got the world the player uh, health food experience level game mode damage all that stuff now it doesn't tell you what you should put into your commands so on the screen you'll be able to see the whole list of variables or i think the author uses uh, the term arguments you can put any of those in your command which is really cool it it does text arguments that's what's on the screen right now and then you have formatting arguments for color coding underlining bolding that kind of stuff and then you have your run command arguments that's the stuff that you can put in your run commands rather than just text return commands and those also include all text and then there's also an item set I didn't mention this earlier and I forgot but you can do custom items with this so if they have a sword that has a certain name and they left click it does a special ability so you can have some like RPG type settings uh, set up in this without using any kind of bigger plugin all that good stuff so you can also create your own variables or arguments by doing my command variables and that's going to give you a list of all the stuff so you do create and then create the variable name and then you'd want to do set and then the name and the value so if you want to just continually use the same variable like a website url or whatever across a lot of different commands or you're setting a bunch of custom items and they want a lot of these to do the same thing have the same cost whatever it is then you can set that in your variable list call that from your custom commands all that stuff in there so as far as creating your own commands we went over two examples where i've actually created we went over a lot of built-in examples as far as creating commands you probably want to use the url or the yml file and edit them in the configuration rather than in game i've tried editing them in the game and you can give it a go but i'm not really going to go over it other than to tell you guys a little bit about how to do it in the command so you're going to do my command slash edit and that's going to give you uh, some information on how to do that stuff i found it rather exam uh difficult and then you can do uh examples to you know it's going to give you more information on how to edit the in-game commands i just found it kind of difficult it's not as easy as just going into config file i would highly recommend just going to config file which we'll talk about in a second and uh i think that the way that you create a custom command in here is you'd want to do that my command edit auto generate so it just creates a blank command and then you can change all the names all the stuff in there but i feel it's a little more cumbersome than actually just going to the config file and doing that so let's hop over the config file and take a look at that okay so here we are in the configuration of our server we see that we are running 1.9 and it is a few days old it's four days old and it's already 22 versions behind which is interesting so we're going to go into the plugins folder here and then we're going to go into my command now there's a whole lot of yml files in here we're going to start in the configuration then go to commands then talk about item set there's a whole lot of other stuff in here your block database um, that kind of stuff so we're going to open up the configuration now you can turn the listener is basically any part of this plugin that you want to actually just full-on disable you can set that to false in here so if you don't want it to work for blocks or custom items or signs you could just set it to false here um, or vehicles that kind of stuff you can set that to true debug uh, probably just leave that um, economy allow debit I believe that actually means allow debt so uh, if a command allow, uh, requires a cost it would not allow people to go negative it would actually just fail if unless you set that to true it would let people go into a negative um, you got a scheduler in here which is false but you can set that to true you have your signs you could change the custom header for the sign so if you don't want it to be my command you want it to be something else you could do that in there which is really cool now here's where you set up your custom blocks uh, right click interaction and physical interaction so that's 
you know, physical interactions walking on it. So if you want to just have a certain block and they walk on it. So if you want it to be kind of discrete, which block it is, you can do that in here. You can do put stones so you can write, you can set that block to be a stone and they walk over it and then it fires off the command. That kind of stuff, if you want it like a trap or something, you know, just some ideas. So the next part is we want to open up the commands. Now this is kind of the meat and potatoes of the whole plugin. There's a whole lot of information up here at the top. To highlight some of it is basically the command type list is each custom command is going to have a special type. Uh, you can do run commands, you can do broadcast text, run command text, you can do run console, uh, warm up, cool down. So you probably want to use like a cool down for um, you know, if you're using like setting up some custom spell casting kind of items, you probably want to use the cooldown. Um, what else? It does have spout integration, which is really cool. You can add permissions from here. So we're just going to kind of review some of the ones in here. I'm going to point out a few of the items. Um, so basically, each custom command is going to be this is going to be the name, and then the command is actually what is run in the the. Uh, text there and then um, this is an alias so it actually just calls a different command now you could also do just a slight, straight up run command in here but it does, it does require a permission so it still ties into default permissions by doing a permission required you can also set up your own permission nodes for this which is in this next example you can set permission required true and then permission node that's the exact node that it checks for and if the user doesn't have that this is the error that it gives back which is really cool you can also for your commands you can have a tab completer so basically you start typing in the command and you hit tab and it gives you a few options that you can use to fill it out and then to in order to do that you need to set a, put a register option in there and set it to true and we're going to go all the way down to the bottom to the two that we set up custom. So we did raw text here, and it just sends it back to just that player. It doesn't broadcast to everybody. And then the warp command is warp, and then it runs this command, and it has a cost of five. So basically, you kind of like put whatever options you want in for each command in here. So let's talk about delay. You can put a delay in here, which is really nice, and that's just the dollar sign, delay, dollar sign, and then uh, delay timer, and then that's how many seconds it delays um, for each one of those. Now, the dollar sign, and then let's see if we can find a variable here. Here you go arg1, arg2. So the variables in this, like we talked about earlier and you saw on screen, is a dollar sign and then the variable name. So player, money, uh, any custom ones you set up, that's how you would call those custom variables in the command itself. Now this one, it fills out. So basically you do slash t and then argument one, argument two, and then that, that basically is how you set the time of day. Uh, so if you need to pull something from the command that they put in, that's how you'd use that argument one, argument two. Now this is a color code right here. And then now here's where you see that text argument that we talked about. That's your player, world, health, food, XP, and then level, game mode, last damage, all that stuff is there. You have your a P online variable, which you would have seen on there. Now we have a broadcast text and a repeat command now. So if you do percent, repeat percent, it's going to repeat whatever command it is that you do uh, over and over to however many numbers that you do. So that's going to repeat it 30 times and then you end it with a percent. So if you want to run a specific command multiple times, that's why you do that. The other option is in here is you can make these commands available for everybody and it's going to run on everybody. So if you want to run it against um, multiple people or different people, you would put execute for on here. So a uh, couple of the options you have for here is sender, you have online players, you have world players. So if you want that command, if you want to teleport everybody in the world to a certain spot or teleport everybody in the world to you or everybody online to you, you can use execute for and it runs it for everybody. So here is our bungee cord example. Now, um, 
it's just bungee tests and then the type is bungee underscore tp and then the server name is hub now you get that server name by doing slash g list and it's going to tell you what name you should use i believe it's case sensitive so keep that in mind if you have a capital hub or capital l o b b y you want to put that in for your server name there so that's it's a lot of stuff on here and I don't want to go all over all of it basically kind of look at all the com custom commands that the author's given you and then kind of piece together what you want test it out see how it goes it's gonna take a little bit longer but hopefully this gets you started in understanding how it works so you can kind of just get up and start making your own stuff and piecing together what is there so we're gonna do talk about the item set so it's just your item set oops not language but this is great by example, I love it when the author allows you to change any of the formatting, colors, all that stuff. So you, you can change it to your own language if you want or change it to your own color code for your server or anything like that. So item set, this is how you set up custom items in the game. Now you do have to enable it in game in order for all of this to work. But he has an example of a stone sword and then left, left click and right click. And they don't really do much. They don't cuss, call anything. It's just an example. So let's hop back in the game, show you guys how that works and then wrap it all up. Okay, welcome back to the server. We're gonna wrap all of this up. So. I got a stone sword and there's not a whole lot going on with it right now. Uh, we're left clicking, right clicking, nothing happens to it. It's just a standard uh, stone sword if we hover over it. So we're going to do my command item set on. We're going to turn, oh, it's already on, so that's good. So we're going to do, um, so we need to rename this to be the, the custom item name, super sword. There we go. So now if we left click and then right click and there we go. So basically if you wanted to add one, so let's add something. So we do um, add whatever we're holding on. So we've added a dispenser and then we want to set it to a specific name. So not every dispenser does this. So we're going to uh, set it to test and then we can do uh, we could do right clicking does uh, our custom YouTube command and left clicking does our warp command. So basically when we left click it teleports us to the spawn. If we right click it does that. But not every dispenser does that now. So if we left click or right click with a dispenser only that special named one which is really cool. So that's about it. Like I said, it's super powerful. So it's a little bit complicated. Be sure to just kind of test and trial and error. That's how it goes. Be sure to comment on the author's bucket page. If you run into any error codes or anything like that, he'll be able to help you out a lot better than I could. But hopefully this video was helpful. Please leave a like if it was. And this is Cosmo. I need you guys all enjoy the game. God bless.